MyLoop in Manual Small Incision Cataract Surgery. In developing countries, manual small incision cataract surgery is popularly called M6. It is a common and highly effective form of cataract surgery. In resource-poor settings, there is often a large backlog of cataract patients and FACO machines coupled with foldable IOLs are cost prohibitive. The patient to ophthalmologist ratio is often much higher and the cataracts are more mature and dense, therefore more difficult and time-consuming to FACO emulsify. In order to combat these obstacles, M6 has become popular in the developing world due to its distinctive advantages over phaco emulsification owing to shorter operative time, lower tech requirement, and most of all, low cost. M6 does not compromise quality for quantity and has been shown to have similar rates of endophthalmitis and similar visual acuity outcomes. Also, with square edge rigid PMMA IOL implantation, posterior capsular opacification can be reduced, which again is a significant cause for visual loss postoperatively. Hard brown cataracts require a larger incision of more than 8 millimeters, which can result in high surgically induced astigmatism, wound leak, and even endophthalmitis. Some modifications have been suggested, such as fracturing the nucleus in the anterior chamber or at the tunnel. However, this can cause endothelial damage. There has been a recent surge in R&D related to FACO instrumentation used during surgery. One such device is called the MyLoop. This instrument divides the nucleus in the capsular bag away from the corneal endothelium with the aim of reducing FACO power and zonular stress. The MyLoop device is the first in a line of ophthalmic tools engineered by Lantech for its micro-interventional cataract surgery platform. Using micro-thin, super-elastic, self-expanding nitinol filament technology, the MyLoop device is designed to offer cataract surgeons the ability to achieve full thickness lens fragmentation for any grade of cataract. A caliper is used to mark the sclera temporally, and a 6 mm external sclerocorneal tunnel is fashioned. In cases in which the MyLoop is used, there is no need to make the large side pockets, as is typical with M6. Two side ports are created with a paracentesis blade. The anterior chamber is entered with the keratome without extending it further. After completing a 5 to 5.5 mm capsular rexus, viscoelastic is injected under the rexus margin to create space for introducing the MyLoop. The MyLoop is then inspected to confirm that the loop is fully retracting and extending prior to entering the anterior chamber. The MyLoop tip is introduced into the anterior chamber with the loop inserted first, followed by the body of the instrument. The loop is then gradually opened horizontally just under the anterior lens capsule. Once the loop is fully opened, the surgeon will rotate the instrument so that the loop becomes vertical and sandwiches the whole nucleus inside the loop. The reflection of the loop below the nucleus can often be seen to help with orientation. Viscoelastic can be introduced into the anterior chamber if it shallows after introduction of the MyLoop. The loop is then closed and the nucleus is fractured into two halves. In these cases, it is helpful for the hemi-nuclei to prolapse out of the bag and therefore the second instrument is only used to prevent the hemi-nuclei from hitting the endothelium. Keeping the loop retracted, it is then removed from the anterior chamber. After enlarging the internal scleral corneal incision to six millimeters, both the nuclear halves are delivered with an irrigating vectus one after the other. After the cortex is removed, a square edge rigid PMMA IOL is placed in the capsular bag. Case two. Similarly, the MyLoop can be used after performing a can opener capsulotomy. The MyLoop is passed under the capsulotomy margin to divide the nucleus into two halves. During this particular case, the nucleus partially prolapses out of the capsular bag, which makes the procedure more efficient. The hemi-nuclei are aligned perpendicular to the wound and delivered. Case number three. 
This is a case of phacolytic glaucoma in which weak zonules can result in intraoperative complications. Here, a capsulotomy was performed using an envelope technique. And the floating nucleus was divided with the myeloop without any damage to the zonules. This suggests that the myeloop can be zonule friendly. In the last two months, we have performed 25 cases in which there was one posterior capsular tear. Postoperatively, there was corneal edema in two patients and moderate postoperative inflammation in two patients. No other complications were recorded. In conclusion, the benefits of myeloop use in M6 include smaller sclerocorneal incisions, which will reduce postoperative astigmatism smaller rexus creation in combination with a square edge PMMA IOL with an overlapping rexus reduces the incidence of post-operative posterior capsular opacification. Easier nucleus prolapse, which reduces the risk of posterior capsular tears, and smaller fragments make nucleus delivery easier and reduces the risk of endothelial damage. The limitations include cost. In the US, these devices are approved for single use. However, in India, we can gas sterilize them for multiple uses. There is a small learning curve as when beginning any new technique. We conclude that the MyLoop is here to play a significant role in managing hard and difficult cataracts in the developing world. Thank you.